meeting shows up awesome if not we still have quorum all right attention this will be a virtual meeting of the Marinwood csd board of directors there will be no public location for, for participating in this meeting any interested member of the public can participate telephonically or via internet by using the web link or the dial-in information printed on this agenda do I need to read instructions? Yes, I do. Instructions on how to make public comment during the meeting. At points in the meeting, when the meeting chair requests public comment, I guess that's me, members of the public participating mm -hmm. in the live meeting, either by internet or telephone, shall indicate their desire to speak. If you're participating via internet, please click the raise hand feature located within the Zoom application screen. If connected via telephone, please dial star nine. All public comments shall be addressed to the board of directors and limited to a three minute per, per speaker. The board of directors may choose to respond to comments or request staff to respond at the conclusion of the public comment period. Okay. Um, so, Tiffany, I guess, can we do a call to order? Roll call? I think you're muted. Oh, am I? Oh, no, there you I go. mean, I, I'm, I got good at reading lips, but... Can everybody hear me? Yeah, I can. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, Board President Oysterman. Oh, I'm first. I'm here. <laughs> Director Case. Here. I don't see Director Kilkenny. I, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Director Ruggieri. I'm here. And Director Shea. Present. One, two, three, four, five. That's it. Okay. All right. Thank you, Tiffany. Of course. Happy New Year's. Oh, you too. Uh, okay. Um, are there any questions about our agenda from the board? No? Okay. Um, I guess there's any questions from the public? No, there's no hands raised. Okay, so I motion to adopt the agenda as presented if there are no other questions. All right, I guess we are, have adopted the agenda. All right, so we are moving on to the consent calendar. Um, we're looking at resolutions 202301, making findings and confirming the need to continue conducting remote meeting via teleconference of the Board of Directors, Fire Commission, Parks and Recreation Commission. Um, and also the draft minutes of regular meetings from December 13th and the bills paid for numbers 69, 55 through 70, 21. Is there any questions about the consent calendar from the board? Bill, you're muted. Oh, he was talking, okay, sorry. Motion to approve. Second. That's you. That's me? Yeah. Okay, but we do need to ask the public, right? Before we, Correct. so, uh, Stephen? One second. Sorry, Stephen. Oh, and everybody else in the public. Is there any comments from anybody? Sorry. You all set? Yeah. Uh, you can hear me, okay? Yeah, we can. Thank you, Stephen. Okay, thanks. Um, well, I, I just want to point out, I did have my hand raised for, uh, you went awful quick through the agenda. I did raise my hand there, but I, apparently no one noticed. So um, you made some um, comments uh, at the beginning of this. Uh, Savannah, I understand this is a challenging format, but um, yeah, I, I'm, I do appreciate if you you try to pay attention to the times when uh, uh, I have an opportunity to speak. Um, and with that, um, I am curious how much we're spending um, uh, on rentals uh, during this period of transition from one facility to another. You know, I. Uh, I, it's, it's not at all clear to me from this uh, uh, this sheet what we're spending on uh, the um, uh, maintenance facility. I would certainly like to see um, all the costs, uh, associated costs with this project broken down. Um, I, I have some sus uh, suspicion that we're, we're way over budget, but I, I, honestly, without uh, adding all these disparate numbers together, I have no clue. And so uh, to be fair to uh, you and to the public, um, it would be great if we could have a report specifically on the, uh, on the maintenance shed project. With that, uh, that's all I really have to say for, for, for the moment. Okay, thanks. Thank you for your comments, Stephen. And um, sorry that we missed you, but I actually don't. I guess I'll pull up the thing and see if I'll block other people's faces and I'll be able to see if somebody's raising their hand. Okay, is there any other comments from the public? No. Alrighty. Um, and do we, Bill, no, already? You have a motion from Bill, a second from Lisa, and so Tiffany can take a vote. Ready? I'm going to start with you again. Board President Oyserman. Aye. Director Case. Aye. Director Ruggieri. Aye. Director Shea. Aye. Thank you. Okay, so we are now moving on to D, which is public comment. Open time for items that are not on the agenda. Just to remind people, speakers are asked to address comments to the board and to limit comments to three minutes. Speakers may comment on only on non-agenda items within the subject manager section of the district. The board may not take action on, consider, or debate items not on the agenda except under near circumstances meeting the statutory test. Response to comments on non-agenda items will be limited to factual information or clarifying questions from the staff or the board at the end of the at the end, at, sorry at the conclusion of the public comments period. The president may refer the matter to staff or to future meeting agenda. All right, any comments from the public? One second, Stephen. We can't hear you. Uh, yes, there we go. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hi. Um, happy uh, 2023. We're now uh, uh, closing in on three years past the pandemic. Three years. Uh, uh, we're getting back on on track. And um, you know, uh, this time of year is a time people make resolutions and um, uh, think of ways they can do things better. I'm a little disappointed in the agenda. This was my comment during the agenda period. It, it, this is a very bare bones meeting. Um, there are some big issues um, that uh, need to get resolved. Um, and uh, I just wish that uh, these public meetings could be more fruitful um, and engaging in some of these big ideas. What what ideas am I talking about? About accessibility in the park, uh, about uh, playground structures, um, of course, the ongoing uh, situation with uh, uh, the Friday night parties um, and, uh, you know, uh, the other part with the, the dogs, kind of, uh, we're, we're now an unofficial dog park. Um, there's a lot of stuff that we could be discussing to uh, make this community better. Um, you guys, you, the board, are, you know, the conscience of the community. And so um, your role is not to simply approve what's going on. That's fine to approve. But really, you, you guys are the ones that set the agenda, uh, set the big ideas, and um, represent the people um, uh, uh, for the uh, administration of our parks. So uh, thank you. You're muted, Savan. 
I went very smoothly into saying thank you to Stephen and saying moving on to district matters. We are looking at E1 appointment of board liaisons to Fire Commission and Park and Recreation Commission for the calendar year of 2023. Um, I'm going to open that up for a discussion. Are people happy with where they're at? Do they want to sit on a different? Does somebody new want to sit on a different commission? Uh, I did talk to Kathleen. She said that she would be happy to continue with the Fire Commission um, if that's the way that it goes here tonight. Um, so I just wanted to show that. Uh, Chris? Um, park and Rec is fun for me. I, I like that. Uh, I don't want to take it from somebody who really wants it, uh, but, <laughs> um, but I would also be fine rolling that into uh, another year. Lisa? Uh, oh, that sounds great to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying uh, being on the NWPA board. Um, it, it's been a learning experience for the last two years, and I want to continue. Do we, is NWPA up also? No, uh, it's not okay. on this. Uh, okay. It's something we can look at. Uh, Bill's been doing it for a little while for us. Yeah. Uh, I think he was just stating that uh, he likes doing that as well. So. Okay. Um, do I need to do a motion for the appointments, or can we just say uh, that? Well, no, it actually is up. You can make the appointments uh, as okay. board president, but before you do, you should ask for any level of public comment on it. Okay. Well, I, I just didn't know if this was going to be something that we needed to vote on. So. Uh, no, you don't need a motion. It's more okay. of the appointment process. The president has the authority to make the appointments. Okay. It's always good to take in the discussion, and it seems like you have pretty good consensus here. Yeah. Okay. Stephen, would you like to have a comment on the Parks and Rec and the Fire Commission? Go ahead. One second. Yeah, hi. Um, so uh, just one comment, uh, you know, this is really about transparency. Um, we do not currently have our meetings uh, broadcast. And I don't think many communities uh, keep their, their, their committees. Uh, if they've got a camera, it's very easy to, to uh, capture the data. I don't know why that would be regarded as acceptable. We are a democracy. And um, I just want to note that these applications, I, I know some of these people, um, I don't know too much about them, but I know a lot of them are uh, ex-fire people. Um, you know, uh, you're on the wrong line, bit... Stephen. What? You're on the wrong agenda item. On you're doing the appointments for the board directors to no, park and rec. Yeah. Oh, okay. For the liaisons, not for the. Um, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Commissioners. Yeah. Well, then, I, then I just have a, a quick question uh, for Bill. I don't know what what it is that you're serving on that you've been enjoying to serve on NWPA. What is that? And could you just tell Marine us? Marine Wildfire. Oh, the wildfire. Wild... Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, other than that, thank you, everybody. I, I apologize for that. Um, so, it happens. Okay. Thank you. Any other, no other questions on this? Okay. Um. Ryan, would you like to make a comment or we'll move on if not? There's no, no other oh, there is. Okay, perfect. All right. So I guess I'm going to appoint Chris Case to Parks and Rec and Kathleen Kilkenny to Fire. All righty. And now moving on to the district manager's report. Eric, would you like to make a statement about that before we dive in? Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, obviously there's the report is there. Um, just take it in order of what I have listed here. Uh, in terms of the maintenance facility, uh, that project is closed out. Uh, it went through its final uh, building inspection. We have the certificate of occupancy. Um, the park staff, uh, as well as Luke, have been uh, working hard to get everything kind of moved in and over there. Um, and I should also state everybody's been kind of helping out with that. Uh, you know, Carolyn and, and Robin have certainly done their share in getting the whole area up and rolling. Um, I'm hoping, hopeful that uh, this week the fences will come down around the temporary facility, so that whole area, I mean, around the uh, permanent facility, so that whole area will be opened up. Um, there's still a little bit of work to do with the temporary facility, but as soon as they can, they'll take those down. Um, but again, just really want to commend Luke and his team with Marco and Esteban and Caesar, um, not only for their work, but just their patience, their perseverance, their feedback, their input, their participation throughout this entire process dating back several years now um, has just been really uh, not only appreciated, but just incredibly useful and has, has helped make an even better facility. Um, and then I also want to acknowledge uh, the project architect, Bill Hansel, who put in a lot of time and effort towards this project uh, and persevered through a, what was a bit of a roller coaster process of uh, direction, misdirection, you know, commentary, uh, uh, every, everything you can imagine that I imagine most architects would have walked away from, uh, you know, in the first year or two of trying to go through this and he stuck it out and just really helped us create a very nice project. So uh, again, uh, much appreciation for Bill Hansel and, and his professionalism on here. Uh, it should also be noted that, you know, throughout this process, he actually provided a lot of pro bono time towards this as well. Um, so again, uh, just a lot of thanks to Bill for that. Um, moving on, on the CalOps, uh, last month we had discussed CalOps and the board authorizing expenditure to join there. We did a bit of a roadblock in there when I followed up after the board meeting, um, which was my second communication with them as I communicated with them prior to the board meeting. I was at that time, the second time, informed that they have arbitrarily decided to freeze all new memberships into the system. Um, so we have not been able to join CalOps. I have not received a decent explanation on this. I've reached out to multiple people from you know the contact to their you know kind of generic uh, at CalOps uh, email address, I reached out to the city manager, I reached out to people within HR, people within IT, um, and eventually they all just kind of stopped responding to me if they even responded at all. So it is fairly disappointing on this. Um, my opinion, um, especially since this is op you know, operated by another government agency, it, it certainly puts us at a, uh, at a competitive disadvantage and creates competitive advantages for all the agencies that were prior members in this. I have no word from them other than a brief uh, mention that uh, they have uh, frozen this for the remainder of the fiscal year, um, which again, makes zero sense to me whatsoever. Um, that said, moving on with our fire department needs, we do have ads placed um, with other various uh, job boards, very specific to the fire industry. Um, things like uh, there is a uh, fire, fire dispatch or a, uh, Jeez, she helped me out with the name on it. Uh it was on the daily so Western Daily Dispatch, yeah, the daily dispatch. <laughs> or Western Fire Chiefs. Yes. Yep, we have that. Thank you, Chief. Have that place with them. Also with the uh, firejobs.com, firecareers.com. We have a dedicated web page um, just strictly fire employment hiring. So all of that is up and rolling, and hopefully applications will be coming in so we can continue to move forward with that. If anything changes with CalOps, uh, we will certainly jump on that opportunity when we can uh, and kind of take it from there. But otherwise, it is fairly disappointing. And uh, while trying to remain polite and courteous and professional, I certainly uh, express my opinion on the 
arbitrary uh, decision making and the competitive disadvantage this puts other people at. Um, and then the other thing I want to mention on my report here is with our financial audit, actually, um, just uh, boy, a week before last, uh, we were informed uh, rather suddenly that uh, Ralph Ricciardi of RJ Ricciardi had decided to retire and completely close down his shop. Um, as we were kind of, I'm sure other agencies were in the middle of an audit. I don't have any details behind such a quick decision on his part, but um, the silver lining to this is one of his uh, lead CPA accountants, a gentleman named Michael O'Connor, has basically taken over his business and is opening his own accountancy in the exact same offices. Michael O'Connor is no stranger to this district. He actually performed our audit for several years, uh, including when I first got here. Uh, we've been using a different gentleman from RJ Ricciardi for the past two to three years, a gentleman named Hep Tham. Hep has decided to also open his own accountancy, but he is going to be walking away from doing government uh, work and is focusing strictly on the nonprofit sector. Um, so Michael has uh, offered, and we I certainly considering we were already in process of doing all this to take over our audit. Um, so he will complete the audit for us. Again, I, I, there's a lot of advantages to this going out, trying to find a new firm um, would be a nightmare. Michael's very familiar with our agency. Uh, and for those who might recall, I think it was about three years ago, we actually put out RFPs looking for new audit firms, yeah. um, received uh, you know probably four to five different responses to that. And, uh, and the board had decided to stay with uh, RJ Ricciardi, which was a decision that I recommended um, and certainly um, supported. Uh, but again, I feel very good with Michael coming in and doing this too. He's very thorough, does a very good job, and was actually very helpful in our first couple years when I first came on on, uh, on moving us. We had you know some kind of a, uh, notes and things like that that were included in several years worth of audits, and he helped us get past that and get everything up to snuff. Uh, and we've had no findings whatsoever in our audits uh, for the last four or five years at least. So uh, bring you on, Michael. I don't anticipate to uh, be much of a snag. Worst case scenario is typically the audit is presented at the February board meeting to the board. Uh, that may have to get pushed back to March just for him to complete all the reports, but he has a uh, guarantee that he'll be able to still submit our uh, financial transactions report to the state controller's office well within the deadline of that. He has all the materials that he needs, and um, he and I have been in a lot of contact since then. So hopefully you'll see it all next month. Worst case scenario, we'll present it uh, to the board at least in March, um, knowing it'll be ready probably much sooner than that, but that'll be our next meeting. Uh, with that, that's where we're at. Um, obviously, a lot of stuff going on uh, with everything else, but these are just some items I wanted to bring to the board's attention. Any questions, thoughts, comments? Anybody want to go before me? No? Okay. Um, just wanted to say that I'm super excited um, for Marco and Esteban and Cesar to be able to go into the new facility and be able to do their work in a space that works for them and not having to juggle the outdoor indoor area. And I appreciate everybody's efforts over the last three years to get us to where we are and the last little push that we have to have. And of course, with Mr. Hansel for sticking in with us and doing everything. Um, and with the financial audit, I know that that's going to be a lot of work on you guys. So thank you guys um, for working with um, Mr. O'Connor over the next uh, few weeks to get that going and getting it situated. And let me know if there's anything I can do, which I don't know what I would be able to do, but let me know what I could do. Okay. Um, any other board members? All right, let's open it up. To uh, well, and then just to clarify, yeah. too, uh, I mean, Michael's kind of picking up where we left off. So we're well yeah. past the getting it going stage. Uh, okay. Well, into the getting it done stage of this, okay. with this transition and him kind of taking on some of this and other accounts transitioning to him. Um, he asked just for a little bit of patience, which, uh, given our longstanding history, not only with RJR, but with Michael, I was more than happy to, uh, to extend. Yeah, I guess I did have one question. Usually you have to switch every couple of years, right? Uh, so it's not every six. Okay, so. If we choose to continue with him, we have at least another five years before we need right. to find. Okay, and he's not bringing in anybody else that we know of. So okay. uh, no, well, he's he's got a lot of staff on his side too, and I think okay. the RJR staff are also staying and moving the, moving with, with his company now. So uh, oh, okay, so he's, right. he's got lower level people that help with a lot of the aspects of it. So okay, perfect. All right, um, let's open up to the public. Sure, one second, Stephen. <clears throat> yes, uh, thank you. So uh, maintenance facility completion update. Um, Couple things, uh, you know, I, I used to uh, work in the uh, industrial auction business, and uh, we would uh, sell off uh, shops about the, you know, even larger than than what we have in our maintenance facility. And um, I would I would put that as a two day job to move. I don't quite understand why it's taking a month. I know we've got the holidays, but the way I would tackle it is um, I make sure I have all the proper uh, equipment, and then I would hire uh, industrial uh, help. You know, manpower is is one company. There's other companies. I don't know who's local, but I would, uh, if, if it's just the, our three guys moving it, it may take a really long time and uh, pull them away from their other responsibilities. Um, also, uh, the fence either blew down or was pushed down again. Um, I think it's an uh, item of danger. I sent another email out. Uh, uh, Luke believes it's the wind. Maybe it's the wind, but it's dangerous because it could blow down and hurt somebody. So it needs to be uh, dealt with immediately. Um, as far as uh, the cow ops, I, I think you know everything you need to know with the way that uh, uh, we were treated. Um, if they're not returning calls, I would. that's a huge red flag. Uh, even if they say, hey, we want your business again, I would really uh, recommend that you take a second look at that because that just doesn't sound right to me the way that you, you were treated. Um, and then thirdly, uh, with the financial audit, um, Savon mentioned that, that you do have to uh, move uh, you know, have a new accountant every six years, I guess, uh, by law. I, I don't know what, what the standard is, but uh, I think there's a benefit to get new eyes on it. And even though I can't say anything bad about Michael O'Connor, we've been getting good reviews, but, you know, maybe uh, a new set of eyes would see something different and we learn something new about our operations and how we could um, operate better in the future. So I, I, I don't know. I, I, I just, it bothers me that we're, we're, we only have basically one accountant for all these years. And uh, the one year that I know we had a, another accountant, we got a bad review. And then we went back to Ricardi again and it was good every, uh, uh, every year after that. So. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, Stephen, for keeping it for three. Um, I believe in terms of the maintenance facility moving over, we have some extenuating circumstances, not just because of the holidays, but the current rainstorm. I would prefer the guys to go slowly and not get any of our stuff damaged and also be able to do the other things that are needed around our facility. So I think it's perfectly reasonable that it's taking some time. It may cost us a little bit of money uh, with having some rental stuff, but it's probably less than if something got broken when it was being moved. Um, all right. It looks like we have one more hand, Eric. Uh, yeah, one second, please. Hello, Gedge. Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yes, sir. 
That's why I'm uh, basketball game is super loud here. But I just was watching the meeting and I wanted to chime in a couple points. I want to agree with Stephen. I think that the fence that fell down. I agree that probably some bad people pushed over and should probably get taken care of. And then you have some cameras and the So a number of people are doing things going to push down fences and stuff. And I also want to point out that maybe you should think about recognizing those shades. I'm just a bit more just today. All right, thank you, Gage. It's really, really hard to hear you. Thank you. Oh, that sounds like an extended game. Um, yeah, I, I think that we called and we're getting the fences taken down, the ones that need to be taken down, and probably when they come, Eric and Luke are going to take a look at the other ones, make sure everything's in place. I know we've had some huge gusts of wind, but uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, so on the, we're going to have uh, in the morning, the crew's going to stack up the panels that have, that have fallen down, um, and then the other ones uh, are, have been deemed stable so far, but um, the company should be out the next few days to, to pick it up and should be fine. But we'll, we'll okay. make sure the rest of it's secure. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I saw that in the email. I just want to make sure it was in the public. All right, um, if there are no more public comment, we are going to actually move to the fire department matters and the appointment of the fire commissioners for the term beginning in January 2021. Sorry, January 21st, 2023. Um, and it looks like we have Tom Ellsbury, Stephen Bark, and John Surratt, who would like to be reappointed. Um, is there any questions from the board? Discussion? Uh, the only thing I would say on this, uh, two things really. I mean, one, you know, we did put it out a couple times via social media. It's been on the website. We've had announcements kind of put in our marquee boards. Uh, we didn't get any uh, interest from uh, new members at this time um, and did try to uh, approach some some neighborhood residents that uh, we thought would be good. Uh, just didn't have the capacity uh, at this point. Um, Tom Ellsbury, Steve Farrak, and John Surratt are all uh, regular participants and, and, in my opinion, bring a lot to the uh, to the table. Stephen Farrak is a former firefighter. He's actually the only former firefighter on this list. Uh, Tom Ellsbury and John Surratt both have different careers uh, uh, but are also very knowledgeable of the neighborhood uh, and our department uh, as well as kind of the firefighting. John Surratt was also heavily uh, involved in volunteering his time with the volunteer efforts uh, when those were going strong. Yeah. Here. So he is a. Uh, I would certainly recommend that all three be reappointed, and we would still have an alternate position available should we be able to find a member of the public who would also like to join. Okay. Um, I guess the question to so Surratt is an upper Lucas, right? No. So we, no? Okay. No. Okay. Sorry. Um, all right. No other questions from the board? I, I would just put out there that I appreciate these guys coming back for another round. Um, it's nice that they'd be willing to donate their time for the, for the uh, greater good of the community. I definitely appreciate that. All right. Um, I guess let's open it up to the public. One second. Stephen. Yes, well, uh, we hope all of you uh, work for the greater good of the community, but uh, how do we know if you're, you're uh, working for the greater good of the community when uh, we don't have, uh, you know, uh, something a little bit more than uh, I want to serve on the, the fire uh, commission again? Um, I, I know these guys, or I'm familiar with these guys. I, I, I don't have anything against uh, against any of them, but um, it's uh, kind of run like a, a private club, and it may, to make matters worse, we don't have good reporting on the meetings. Uh, it's all anecdotal um, reports, um, and even when there's a good faith effort to report everything, it's inevitable that uh, things are going to get missed. So um, we just need a little bit more accountability from all, from all of our commissions and our commissioners. Um, you serve the people. We're, we're not. We, we are a democracy, believe it or not. And uh, um, you haven't been appointed, you know, uh, crown prince. You're, you, you have a responsibility to uh, communicate with the public. And so do our, fire, our commissioners. And um, uh, the way you can do that is just by recording um, these meetings and um, also ask that the fire commissioners, um, you know, articulate what's going on within the fire department to the public. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen, for your comment. Um, is there anybody else from the public? No. No? Okay. Um, I guess I'll make, I will appoint because I'm president. Um, uh, I actually have five commissions that you would take a motion in about. Okay. That. No problem. So is there a motion to appoint these three outstanding citizens, Thomas Elsley? All, all right. Thank you, though. Second. I guess all in favor? Or do we have to do uh, Tiffany? Be, Tiffany will okay. Board President Boisman? Aye. Director Case? Aye. Director Ruggieri? Aye. Director Shea? Aye. Thank you. All right. Congratulations, gentlemen, and thank you for another year of your service, volunteer service. Um, okay. Chief? You're up. Well, good evening and happy new year, everyone. And uh, I just want to start by thanking all of you for your service. Much like the commissioners, you're volunteering your time uh, monthly like this and on the various boards that you participate on in addition to our meetings on every month. And so this is uh, it's admirable to, to see folks step up in their community and try to make a difference and contribute in a way that, that you do. Um, so I just offer my thanks and appreciation for you for doing that as well. Um, I'll start with the Marine Wildfire Commission Authority and Vegetation Management. We have two assistance programs that remain available to Marine Wood residents. One is the direct assistance program and the other is a grant program. We encourage um, folks to reach out and apply for those grants and or direct assistance while the funding is still available. It's not to say that there's not going to be additional funding, but right now there is an opportunity to try to get projects completed utilizing these services that are available through the Fire Foundry staff, sometimes the C crews or AmeriCorps crews, and <clears throat> the, the grant funding itself to help offset the cost of some of the projects to continue to draw down risk on your personal property. So there's a, a, a flyer that's been uh, modified. It's uh, got information. We also have a waiver form that we encourage individuals to submit to Simon Wright at City of San Rafael. And if you're able to convey that and share the word, please do. And if you haven't taken advantage of it just yourselves, I encourage you each to do so if possible or if needed. Um, <clears throat> The Marine Wildfire Prevention Authority's annual report is now available for uh, fiscal year 21 and 22, or 21 22 rather. And with that, there's a, a clear uh, indication that there was a substantial amount of work done in Marin County. And so the effort continues on very successfully, thanks to the leadership of Executive Director Mark Brown and all the committed individuals who are participating from either the Ops Committee, the Advisory Technical Committee, their new staff that have been on board to help handle California Environmental Quality Act uh, related concerns, and so much more. So this is this is really um, mushrooming into a really dynamic um, measure and or outcome for I think Marin. I think uh, other communities are going to be modeling this as they see the continued risk reduction and the, the true benefit to each homeowner and or property owner within the county. So uh, I hope this is going to continue long after that 10-year um, window that it was actually voted for. I'm assuming that folks are going to see the benefit and return on investment and continue to support it. 
COVID. Yours truly had COVID right after my birthday, right around Thanksgiving. And I thought I was impervious somehow to, to, to catching it, you know, after going 30 plus months without being infected. And I found out the hard way that not so much. Fortunately for me, my symptoms were not very severe, um, but I did end up catching two different colds or flus right after COVID, which showed me that not only is this stuff potent, it reduces your immunity. And so um, I was fully vaccinated uh, and took all the boosters. And so I'm assuming that maybe I was spared from severe symptoms and or hospitalization in large part due to the, the vaccinations and the, um, the boosters. And so with that though, about this time last year, Omicron had been surfacing as the dominant variant that was creating a lot of havoc um, and creating a lot of hospitalizations. And um, there was still severe illness and death at that time. And so the, the current uh, variant that's out here is actually, from what I understand, related to the Omicron, but it's not quite as um, deadly or severe, but it's very infectious. Infectious so much so that they say that there's a large likelihood that anyone who has not received or um, been impacted by COVID directly is likely to actually contract COVID based on just how severe this new um, variant is. Um, <clears throat> with that, um, the booster that we had in the fall of 2022 only 14% of the U.S. population has received a booster. That's an alarmingly low number. But equally alarming is here in California, but they say the percentages are just slightly better at 17%. So I think vaccine weariness and or wariness has kicked in truly on a nationwide basis. But I'm concerned, but I'm not overly concerned, but I'm very concerned in large part due to something that apparently is taking place in China right now, where they are start, starting to see a, another surge in infections, hospitalizations, and even reportedly deaths. Although the Chinese government has opted to allow um, individuals to come and go freely without um, being vaccinated or showing proof of recent vaccination or boosters, um, there's a, a concern that this could be a political maneuver somehow or another. And so as the government reduced the number of lockdowns, the cases started spiking and, and started overwhelming their facilities and their hospitals. And so this is um this is something to pay close attention to, in my opinion, especially given the contentious relationship that's occurring right now between China and some of the other countries that are now requiring individuals who are traveling from China to now be tested and or verified as COVID-free um, upon arrival. So in their country. Um, so that being said, um, the new uh, variant I was re referring to is XBB.1.5. And they say it's a descendant of the BA2, and it's a combination of another subvariant that actually increased the number of cases we had in April of 2022. So with that, 14 plus new mutations have spun off from this particular um, variant. I'm not a scientist, I'm not anyone that understands how this stuff works or operates, but I'm very concerned that so many variants seem to sprout from what's happened with a particular virus. So I'm wondering to what degree COVID is something we're gonna be living with um, for either years or decades to come here in this country. With that, I encourage everyone to continue to mask, continue to wash your hands. Um, I know we're not practicing social distancing quite the way we were, but I'll be trying to keep an eye on what's happening with COVID levels. They say that that XBB.1.5 variant actually started on the East Coast. It didn't start from overseas anywhere, um, which I, I found that to be kind of interesting in and of itself that we have our own variants that are surfacing within our own population here, let alone what's occurring in Europe or in, in Asia and other places around the world. So uh, with so many variants popping up, again, it just seems like it's a good idea to try to take some precautions and maintain at least um, masking requirements whenever you're in, in large groups or whenever you're with individuals that you may not be very familiar with, just as a protective measure. Um, all that to say, um, <clears throat> The numbers are down, but in large part, they think the numbers are down because there's not as much reporting taking place based on the fact that so many people are taking at-home tests and they're not reporting those results. About December 2021, there were about 11 million tests um, and the results from those tests were known. Right now, they're only counting about two and a half million tests with results being known. So you're talking about four times as many tests that aren't, you know, probably, that may or may not be being taken right now with the results being unknown. So the great thing is where our hospitals are, are not um, overwhelmed right now, but there is a spike in a steady trend of increase in wastewater showing Omicron levels um, in the South Bay, as an example, uh, and other parts of California. So this is still something to keep an eye on, but we're not hearing about um, COVID the way we were just even say six months ago. So that's a positive sign. On another positive note, on Sunday, December 18th, Engine 58 went out with um, several individuals and Santa and his elves distributed candy canes, uh, collected wish lists, and otherwise just gave great cheer and encouragement to the youth and the others in the community, took some photos and um, brought some smiles to some of the kids and families, uh, with the exception of maybe that one child I see in the photo that I shared. Uh, somehow or another, I'm not sure if Santa said no to their wish or somehow or another they were upset because they didn't get a candy cane. I'm not sure what happened there, but clearly we didn't please all of our customers. But I think 99.9% .9 were okay. Isn't it, that, isn't it a tradition that your first and second version uh, coming up to see Santa, you cry? I thought that that's, maybe this is, he's a young guy, so maybe this is his first in-person Santa visit. That could very well be. And then you're sitting on the back of a truck, which is probably not what they're expecting from Santa, right? On the yeah. sleigh or somewhere <laughs> at the mall, but not on the back of a truck. So it could very well be just something along those lines. You're absolutely right. Um, hopefully next year, the same person will, will be able to capture with a smile and put that photo up. We'll see. Um, <clears throat> Christmas tree recycling. Please get that tree out of your house if you haven't already done so. Um, until this Friday, uh, Christmas trees will... Uh, community members are able to dispose of their uh, student Christmas trees at the north end of the Marinwood Community Center next to the sandbag area. So again, the same location as this time last year. And what happens after Friday? What do people need to do with their Christmas trees? Uh, you know, I would ask them to really cut up their trees on their own as best they're able at that point and put them in their recycle bins if they'll fit. Um, or maybe if they're keeping them curbside, maybe there's still an opportunity for folks to come around and collect them if they're lucky. We'll see. Okay. They can I'm not quite sure how they're handling that if they haven't really met the deadlines. They can bring them directly to the Marine Resource as well. Okay. All right. Uh, emergency incident. This was a tough one. On Friday, December 30th, um, our crews responded to a vehicle accident that. Um, actually claimed the lives of two youth. Uh, there were five people in the vehicle, although I don't have all of the details. Uh, I understand that two teenagers um, from the Battle of Paris in the incident, and some of those teens actually had a connection directly to our Marinwood um, Community Center and were employees and or participants in the programs there. And so this is really unfortunate. Um, two of the, the individuals were transported, transported in critical condition and um, one was in stable condition. And so given that, I just I thought it'd be appropriate that we take a moment to um, just say a quiet prayer and a moment of silence for those who passed on, those whose families were directly impacted by this uh, during the holiday season, and for those um, friends and, and associates of those teens and how this must have impacted them as well. So if, if it's okay, I'd like to offer a moment of silence here for at least maybe 30 seconds. So I also um, just want to acknowledge our crews who responded on that. That's a very tough call. Anytime you are responding to fatalities involving children or teens, folks who haven't really had a chance to really live their lives and experience a lot of things. Um, those are some of the tougher calls that first responders can respond to. So I just want to take um, a moment to, to quietly acknowledge the first responders at, at Engine 58 who um, responded to that incident were first on scene and 
partnered with Marin County Sheriff's Office, Nevada Fire Department, and others to um, provide care. And then later on, just support to one another's peers. So uh, again, sometimes we don't we don't have the reminder until something tragic occurs, and this is one of those reminders. Oh, so 155 calls in December, busy month. And I'm sure January is going to be almost equally busy given the, the heavy rains we've been experiencing and uh, the wind conditions, down power lines, the trees, the um, vehicle accidents, the various things that come from you know this season and this time of year when we have what we've had. And so just wanted to again acknowledge our crews, despite the inclement weather, they're still doing sub six minute response times, which is this is great. Um, again, it's a testament to their understanding that they have to get out and get on scene quickly. And so with that, that um, completes my report. I'm available for any questions if anyone has any questions or comments. Chief, if I could really quickly uh, just acknowledge that the, the flyer that I included here, since this has been published, um, Chief White actually got from his staff an updated flyer that's a little bit more specific to Marinwood uh, and makes it very clear that all you know Marinwood Lucas Valley residents qualify for this uh, funding assistance as well in terms of the vegetation and defensible space uh, funding program. Um, so I do have copies of that. We'll blast that out on social media. I've already printed a stack and put them with all of our flyers in our lobby here. Um, so that'll go out as well. And so thank you, Chief, for uh, the help with that. I do think it reads a lot cleaner. Hopefully we'll get even greater levels of response. Um, and then just in terms of the Santa's um, sleigh uh, and the Santa visits through the neighborhood, I certainly want to thank um, John Surratt, who is on our fire commission, a long time uh, volunteer, as well as Greg Stilson, who's been involved with our district for a lot of years. John actually uh, is qualified, licensed properly on our insurance, and he drove the Type 3 engine uh, and kind of led the procession, uh, followed by myself in our utility truck and then uh, with Santa, and then also to the on-duty crew that day, which was Captain Papa Nicolau, um, Don Papa Nicolau, Engineer uh, Jeff Smith, and Firefighter Paramedic Will Kelly, who were able to follow along with uh, our uh, Engine 58 throughout the procession as well. And uh, it just adds a lot to it when you have, you know, the fire engines plus Santa plus everything else. So just a lot of thanks to people who gave up a very long Sunday to uh, yes. make this happen. So uh, it was a fun event. I enjoyed being a part of it and especially appreciative of the people who volunteered their time to come help it out. I'm super bummed that we missed it. I love seeing it. Minus, we're Jewish, so we run out and give presents, and then the guys are always like, oh, do the girls want pictures? And they're like, no, we just want to see the fire trucks. So. Well, we still parked in front of your house with the sirens blaring. It's solid 60 <laughs> seconds. So we, <laughs> we missed it. I'll let the girls know. Maybe next year we'll be home for it. Um, thank you for a very thorough report. Um, I do have one question, Chief. The flooding underneath the highway mm -hmm. um, overpass, so are, is the truck able to get through? I mean, the rest of us can do like the roundabout, but like that will kind of impede. You know, I didn't get a good sense of how deep that flooding was, but we always discourage anyone from driving through any yeah. flooding conditions because you don't know the actual depth and whether or not there's debris or some other right. obstruction under the water. But my understanding is there may have been some blockage in the storm drains in that area okay. and that may have led to that compiler piling up the way it had. But um, is it going to get clear for you guys so that you guys don't, if you need to go out that direction with the fire truck, or is that not an issue well, right now? Let's just say um, I think we'll try, we'll assess whether or not it's safe. And if we don't think it's going to be safe, we'll try to find an alternate route. And any okay. good engineer or truck driver will know at least two ways that they can travel, especially given that there's a report that there's an obstruction or some other impediment such as high water okay. that may be a problem. So it may take a little bit longer to get to our destination, but there's certainly ways around um, that one location. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Just was thinking about that today when I was trying to get over that direction for my kids. So, okay. Um, any questions from the rest of the board? It looks like Bill has his hand raised. Yeah, I just wanted to chime in on that morning. They had 101 southbound between Lucas Valley and Terra Linda, <laughs> knocked down to one lane because of flooding. That was at, I think, 4, 4.30 in the morning when I was going through. So okay. that, there was a lot of rain that morning or night. It just all flows together at this point, right? Okay. Um, any other? Just yeah. one quick comment. Um, Chief White, uh, and I'll talk to the guys when I bump into it in the neighborhood, but I just, um, Man, that accident is like the most horrific of tragedies and definitely touched the staff and, and the neighborhood in, in a big, big way. Um, I just hope you can also pass along um, as their chief how how much that means to us that um, that your guys are, are ready to do the job that we all, you know, none of us want to do that, but they're trained, they're ready. Um, and what they were able to do for those kids and that family, even in dire circumstances, was amazing. Um, and I'm sure that takes a large fall on them. So I'm glad that it looked like they were able to get some sort of counseling if they felt like they needed it. And, and I'm sure that's ongoing, as you suggested. Um, just can't thank them enough because you never know when it's going to be, you know, when you're going to need that help. And, and we have an incredible group that looks out over us each and every day. And I appreciate that. Thank you, Director Kasher. You're absolutely right. I did reach out um, briefly to Captain Papa Nicolau and express my appreciation, and I asked him to convey that to the rest of the crew. I think there's nothing like just stopping in and doing a wellness check. But sometimes you want to let things subside a little bit. You don't want to just go right in, especially if they've already had some sort of opportunity for peer support or other um, critical incident stress briefing and, and things of that nature. But um, the, the thing about the, the unusual thing in the fire service is that you just never know when something is going to resurface. Um, last night, I actually spoke with someone that I was their academy director in Oakland. He's been in the department for 15 years. And just a week prior to that, I ran into someone when I was at the hospital who has only been in the organization 15 years from that same class, and they're having some severe challenges and mental health issues and concerns. And so. Um, it's cumulative sometimes. What you see and experience as a first responder takes a significant toll on some individuals. And so given that, um, you know, we all have things we, we recall and we all have things that surface out of the blue, just there could be a trigger that maybe someone looked familiar or some situation you saw triggers the thought process. And um, it's helpful to have tools, but also helpful to have peers and other support um, both in and outside of the fire service to, to be able to access when you're having some challenges. And so um, sometimes people, as you know, turn to substances, they turn to, you know, just um, becoming introverts and becoming aggravated or just very short tempered. All these various things are, are signs and symptoms and fallout from having been exposed to traumatic things. And I think our military and law enforcement probably see and experience this on a greater basis to some degree than even the fire service. And so um, we certainly appreciate your acknowledgement. I'll, I'll communicate that back to the members. Um, but it's just something you want to kind of be mindful of over time. Just And that's where a good company officer, or Captain Papa Nicolau or Bracket or Subatella, they have to know their personnel and see if something is amiss with them and look for anything that may be off just that shift over the course of a you know several week period, as an example, just to get a clue sometimes because some people are proud and they don't want to communicate about what they're confronted with. And that goes back to just the stigma that used to exist in the fire service about um, you know, what you witnessed and, and how strong you are if you break down and how you're perceived by your peers and all these other things that, that tie into why people struggle with things for so long. But I think the great thing is we're, we're finding that a lot of people are putting a lot of intentionality and focus on mental health and well-being and providing resources and um, opportunities to have open dialogue about any challenges the first responders experience. So although the numbers are
Should we open up to public? All right, Stephen, would you like? One second, please. Stephen. Uh, yes, thanks for the report, uh, Chief. Uh, and uh, yeah, my heart goes out to the firefighters and also uh, the children that uh, uh, perished and their families and you know the trauma of all that. Uh, we cannot underestimate uh, uh, all those kids had friends and uh, people in school that they knew. This is um, going to impact uh, quite a number of children. Um, because they're minors, I, I don't know if we, we know, and I, I, I don't want to even ask you, Chief, but if drugs and alcohol uh, were involved, um, it could be a, uh, you know, an object lesson uh, that parents can you know, drive home to their children. I kind of hope that if that happens, that comes out, but uh, I realize this is a very sensitive topic. Um, I did have a question regarding your report, and um, you, you know, every month uh, it seems like you, you have a report on COVID, and I, I'm, it, it's confusing to me. Um, you know, of course you're a chief uh, public safety official, but you're you're not a medical officer, and I'm just wondering when you tell us, uh, report to us, are, is this stuff that you put together, or are you reporting on behalf of Matt Willis? I'm just wondering, you know, where the information is coming from, uh, just to put it in context. Other than that, I mean, uh, thank you very much for uh, you know keeping us informed. But uh, anyhow, that's my question. If you could answer it, I'd be much appreciated. Absolutely. Um, as far as the, the COVID reports, those are um, an FYI. It's not something that's official coming from the county medical health director. Um, if I provide statistics as an example for Marin County in particular, Marin Wood, that's going to more than likely come from our Office of Emergency Services or the county health department and stats. Um, when it comes to that, <clears throat> when it comes to just general information, I can get that from multiple sources. And generally speaking, that can be anywhere from the Marin IJ to some of the other sources that exist nationwide um, that are readily available to most other individuals who want to take the time to, to research and or learn about what's taking place with um, current COVID, uh, both in the Bay Area and the state and or across the country around the world. So the goal with the report on COVID is not so much to approach this as if I'm a medical expert in any way, it's just to share information. And the reason being is that COVID's had a dramatic, a dramatic impact on the safety and well-being of our communities, and it continues to impact those of us in the fire service and law enforcement and in our communities. Uh, as I stated, I just had COVID recently. We still have individuals that are being infected with COVID and are required to isolate and still follow protocol. Um, even now, even as of just recently last week, in San Rafael, as an example, we had members who um, reported positive and were and exposed to other members in the organization. So now those precautions still have to occur. Um, and so it's very possible that, uh, for instance, when we go back to in-person meetings, that we may be actually spreading or potential spreaders of COVID, um, depending on what precautions we take. And so this is, since we're operating in a virtual environment right now, um, we're not as exposed, but if we're co-located much like we are in San Rafael, where there's individuals who are in City Hall, you know, shoulder to shoulder or approximately one another, the risk goes up, the likelihood that you might contract COVID or some other flu or cold increases. But well, that's primarily the reason for the report. Uh, if there's a lack of interest in the COVID related um, reports, I'm more than happy to either condense or remove those uh, if the board of directors and or fire commissioner or the district manager would like me to remove those from our future reports. I think that at the beginning of COVID, we didn't know anything and that you had the most up-to-date safety precautions and everything that anybody would hear. And so you were our gateway to knowing what's going on in our area besides what Matt Willis was saying. And so I have definitely appreciated them. Um, probably at some point we'll be able to stop it. I, I currently still appreciate the information because I still think finding out about what's going on with our security, well, our safety personnel in Marin is important to me. Um, I don't know about the rest of the board members and Eric, but I still appreciate it. Is everybody good with still keeping it? Yeah. Great. I, I think that the information is still very useful and top of mind. So I'm yeah. ready. thank you. And I just wanted to mention that no matter what happened, the reasoning behind it, um, the incident on the 30th was horrifying and unfortunate and our hearts go out to everybody who was injured and the unfortunate passing of the two teenagers. And at this point, I don't think it's a good time to start talking about the whys and the who, what, where, when. Um, it's just to be there with the family and let them know their hearts go out with them. And of course, as Director Case eloquently said, that we are very thankful for our firefighters being able to be there and do this work for us and um, appreciate everything they put themselves out there for us. Um, is there any other questions from the public or can we maybe let Chief White go for the evening? Yeah, you have no, no hands raised. Okay. All right. Thank you, Chief White. And hopefully you stay healthy this next month and we will see you. Um, I think I'm going to rebound finally. So thank you. Don't go it. around preschoolers and you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. I got a sixth grader. So that, there, there's some of the risk right there, right? Yeah. <laughs> you guys have a great night. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. All right. Um, now we are on to F. Oh, no, we are on to G. Parks and Rec Matters and the appointment of the Park and Recreation Commissioners for the term of January 1st, 2023. And Eric, did you want to talk about this? Sure. This will go really fast because uh, we don't have anybody who applied. So including a couple of uh, uh, commissioners whose terms have expired and have for various reasons elected not to uh, seek reappointment at this time. We'll keep pounding the pavement and pushing it out there and talking to people. And uh, if anybody knows anybody who might be interested, I would encourage you to send them my way and I'd be absolutely thrilled to speak with them about it. And again, I'll keep uh, out there looking for folks and, you know, just have received various uh, reasons as to why people are either uh, not available or not uh, willing to be engaged at this time. So. so in terms of our current... Thing that you, have, we're working you, have on. Three, you have three current commissioners who have another year on their term, so there is still a quorum uh, of the commission uh, as a body, uh, being with a total of five regular members, so you'll still have three regular members. Now, it does get a little bit confusing in that if one of them doesn't make it, essentially you don't have a quorum, you can't vote on any action items, it, it kind of limits the uh, need and or purpose for a meeting with only two uh, commissioners, so we'll just kind of take as it goes. The remaining commissioners are well aware that uh, at this point in time they're the only three, so we're especially counting on their availability for meetings and input. Uh, and you know, I would also say that the two commissioners who have elected to come off the commission um, are still you know, very well engaged and are still very much uh, uh, willing to participate more from a member of the public standpoint or even as a resource to staff as well, so I uh, appreciate them for that. All right, thank you. And thank you to the three that are still on and also to the service of the two that have unfortunately decided to not get reappointed. Um, anything from the rest of the board? I'm just curious who the three are that are still on so that when I bump into them, I can thank them personally and engage them in the conversation. Sure. John Campo is remaining, uh, Michael Benish is remaining, and Ian Fine is remaining. Thank you. John Toon and Ann Shawson will be stepping down.
Thank you. All right. Uh, there's no other questions. I guess um, so. These three, John, Ian, and Michael, will be working with us on the playground replacement. Okay. And all right. Wonderful. So, is there any questions from the members of the public? It looks like Stephen has his hand raised. One second, please. Stephen. Uh, yeah. Okay. I, I just wish I could see all your faces when I say this. I, I uh, submit my name for consideration. Um, I do think that actually the Park and Rec Commission is the most uh, important uh, uh, commission uh, for our quality of life. I do think that our greatest asset is our parks and our open space and our people and our rec department. Um, I'm not saying that uh, uh, to uh, be appointed, but I just, I, I really think that, um, you know, there's a marketing issue. And the reason why you aren't getting people to respond is these commissions are just too cloistered. Uh, we're, we're not really communicating with the public. And uh, I do think it's important uh, as we move forward to have a vision and um, to reach out to the community. I, I just cannot understand why people don't take greater interest in uh, the administration of, of this uh, lovely place that we call home. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen, for your comment. Um, Eric, I believe it needs to be in writing. So Stephen, if you could send Eric a Word document, not just an email um, stating what you just stated, uh, we can go ahead and pick it up at the next meeting. All right. The so next, jump in for yeah. one comment. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I just don't know the official numbers. Do we usually have five commissioners? How does that work? Five plus an alternate. Okay. That's how many seats are on the commission. Okay, cool. Yeah. When I started, we had five and I was the alternate and then I moved up, um, but it took me two years, I think. But, and also also for the fire, when I started, there was actually five and an alternate, right, Eric? Uh, I feel like there was money the, more. The fire commission has five regular members and two alternates, uh, one yeah. alternate from Ringwood, one alternate from CSA 13, and one of the regular members is also from CSA 13, and that's just a long-standing agreement that yeah. between of us here. So it's over the decade that I've been here, um, things have gone down. Okay, um, moving on, the Recreation and Park Maintenance Activity Report. I'm assuming Luke is going to help us out with that. Oh, thanks, Yvonne. Yes, hello, everyone. Um, so this last month, the recreation department, one of our biggest programs was running our annual winter break camp uh, over the winter holiday where kids were off of school. Um, we had a great uh, week of camp this year. Uh, we served 40 families. Um, it's always a fun time to see the kids. And also um, it's a great opportunity for our staff, our um, rec staff to uh, get back in touch with the summer camp staff. Uh, a lot of, of them uh, come and work this camp on their home on break. And uh, Robin conducts a bunch of meetings with staff about getting ready, planning, uh, getting planning ideas for summer, um, and figuring out our staffing situation for the summer. And also she uh, performs a lot of interviews. Um, she makes our entire camp staff uh, re-interview every year, and which I think is a really, um, it's a really awesome thing is to have them come into a formal um, declaration of why they want to work in camp and, and talk about uh, what they think their strengths are and, and what they're interested in. And uh, it's, a, it's a huge undertaking. We've, um, as you know, uh, a lot of staff, but um, it was great uh, to see everybody in town. Not everyone that came into interviews working the winter break camp, but um, there was a lot of overlap there. Uh, it was also a chance to give some people uh, a chance to try some leadership positions. They're applying for like, a summer camp director or assistant director position for the summer. Um, give them a little bit of a chance to oversee some of the groups for part of the weekend with lots of oversight, and it's, um, it's kind of a great little trial for them. So that went really well. We had a really great. Uh, Great camp, and I'm um, really staff. We're really uh, excited about the summer. Um, we we spent pretty much the whole year, aside from those ten weeks of summer, nine weeks of summer planning for the summer. And uh, so we've got. Um, I, I scrolled my camera here. These all sorts of uh, staffing lists and diagrams and ideas and supplies and things on all the office. And uh, it's been it's been all hands on deck trying to figure out um, all the things we need to do. Our um, Marinewood review. Uh, or I have a title in my report. I said uh, biannual, it's actually semi-annual, since twice a year. But our, um, we're working really hard on our spring summer catalog that lists all of our summer camps and the pool programs and all of our classes and events. And um, we have to have all of our details and pricing and what we're offering finalized uh, to be able to get that out in time for people to register. So um, we have to know everything that's going to happen in June, July, August, um, basically in the next couple of weeks. So um, it's crunch time here in, in the rec department, and um, things are going really well, but we're, um, we're working hard. And uh, we've got a really uh, good program coming together for the summer that we're excited about. So um, you can expect to see the spring summer marine review coming out um, in mid February. Uh, we're finalizing details, uh, proofing that, and it has to go. We'll, we'll take it into the printer, and it'll, it'll get mailed out to um, all the homes in the nearby zip codes. So um, we're really excited about that. I just want to acknowledge uh, Carolyn. Holden, who does a lion's share of um, assembling that catalog and getting everything um, in there, it, it looks great. A lot of other uh, recreation departments and agencies um, farm that out and pay a lot of money to have outside contractors um, do that. And I think ours looks better and we do it all in-house and um, I'm really grateful to, to have that kind of talent on our staff. So um, we're working a lot on, on planning those things. We have a lot of um, great spring uh, classes and programs that are now open for registration that will be starting. Uh, most of our programs are starting around uh, February, early March and March and April, but we have some new classes we're excited about, including some uh, an adult art uh, watercolor class, uh, a new program that we've never offered before that we're excited about. And, um, uh, and that's actually the, the artist that's instructing that class has a display up right now in our lobby. So if you've been to the community center in the last um, month or two, you would see uh, a lot of wonderful watercolor works and he'll be uh, teaching a class on watercolor. So we're really excited about that. And um, we also have to look at my list of uh, pronouncements, but we have a class called White Crane Salat, which I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but it's a Chinese Indonesian martial art that'll be a new program uh, we're excited to offer, but it's geared towards youth. And so um, we have a handful of other things going on um, in addition to our uh, regular kind of canon of, of adult and youth programs. So all that is ramping up and um, getting ready to start in the coming weeks and months. Uh, our next special event will be our annual wine tasting event, Raise a Glass, which uh, this year is taking place on Saturday, March 4th. And um, we're still finalizing some of the details. We've got a lot of great wineries coming to that. We'll have some live music, uh, some good food. It's a really good time. So I'll um, announce more details at the next meeting, but, uh, but we're really looking forward to that event. On the parks maintenance side, uh, we've really been doing a lot with the rain. That's been a big uh, a big part of our time um, this last couple of weeks. And the staff has spent a lot of time monitoring the, the drains and the ditches and culverts throughout the district, uh, monitoring the creek, monitoring the buildings, the roof, um, and making sure things are, are draining and not flooding and that everything's in good shape. Um, so we've got a few, uh, few drains this just uh, this last couple of days. We've been out um, clearing some drains that had got a lot of debris uh, blocking, uh, nothing too crazy, but we had to be out there for, for a few hours, a couple different days, um, just pulling giant logs and, and sticks out of the drains so the water could, uh, could flow freely. Um, and Oh, I've got a few minor leaks that uh, staff have been working on uh, sealing up and repairing, uh, no major damage. Um, but uh, it's been just, just doing, doing rounds, responding to calls. A lot of concerned residents
but uh, nothing catastrophic and, and we're hoping that uh, things continue to just hold steady. Uh, we have sand in the parking lot and we're doing sandbags um, at the community center and at the firehouse for after hours and we've got a lot of residents coming to take advantage of that. Uh, we've, we've refilled the pile um, once so far and I assume we'll probably be doing a little bit more um, with the forecast coming up. But um, the staff have been wet and cold uh, throughout the uh, the last couple weeks but um, they have a nice warm shop to return to for breaks and uh, for lunch and so that, that's been um, really nice. Um, between dealing with all the oh, we also uh, today just got out there was a large pine tree um, uh, broke and fell over the trail uh, up above Middlebury um, near, near the Newberry drain and um, just got around and cut that off the path and got that cleared up so that's been a little bit of that. But um, aside from dealing with the weather, um, staff have been moving into the new uh, facility, um, trying to get everything organized. Um, we potentially could do it a little faster. Uh, I know some of the commentary earlier tonight mentioned that. We're trying to be methodical. We're trying to get everything in the right spot and find a good place for everything. We, the shop came empty and bare. Um, it's a lovely facility, but um, there's no cabinetry. There's no um, outside of the kitchen. There are, there's no shelving. There's, there's no racking. So we're ready to install a lot of infrastructure to make the shop work. And so um, we're taking our time to make sure we do it right and so that the shop will be um, useful for um, years and years and years to come. And so. Um, and it was intentionally done so that it was bare, so that the needs at the time, not at the time of design, would be able to be met. Uh, absolutely. That wasn't the point. That was just uh, stating. No, no, no. I'm just stating. Uh, stating so yeah, that everybody knows it wasn't that we cut corners now. It was that we literally intentionally did that. Yeah. Uh, exactly. And so um, it's, it's, it's been going great. Uh, and uh, the, the morale is uh, at an all-time high. Everyone is so relieved and excited to be in a real facility that is um, sealed, that is, uh, is well-lit, that is heated. And, um, and uh, it's, it's just going to be a wonderful workspace. And everyone's very, very grateful and very excited about it. Um, so we're hoping to continue to have windows uh, apart from the, the daily duties to be able to continue to um, get everything organized and, and make it home. But we will um, get the fencing down uh, very soon and moving away from the temporary uh, workspace. Um, it's, it's coming along. We're, we're most of the way there. There's just a few odds and ends to, to tie up. So um, I will have uh, more productive uh, news uh, next time I'm going to let you know and then I mentioned graffiti. I know you've all seen the "I love you" graffiti throughout the park or throughout the neighborhood. Um, we are we are working with the sheriff to try to locate uh, who's doing that. But we've, we've been cleaning it up as we can. But um, it's very frustrating, and it's been uh, difficult in the weather to get out there and try to remove some of the stuff. So um, we do have a lot of graffiti in the park, and um, we're hoping that whoever's doing it has gotten bored and uh, stopped or either moved on. But um, I'll, I'll uh, keep keep up to the board on that. Um, but we did do a, a police report, and we're hoping that we can prove uh, that. Uh, and then in the coming months, we'll be preparing for the pool season, the pool opens um, for the Marine Water Devils in the beginning of March and to the general public in the beginning of April. So uh, we are uh, continuing to just get the facility prepared, making some repairs, getting some things screwed up down there. That'll be um, a big priority over the next month. Um, we also have some, some plantings and, and further work to do with the facilities. Um, at this time, though, I'd uh, open up to any questions anyone has. Thank you. Does the board have, have any questions? I have a quick question. And Luke, I haven't had a chance to even talk to you about this. And actually, Chris, you might know something about this as well. I, I just heard uh, earlier this evening that the bridge that goes to the middle school um, over Miller Creek was closed off, uh, potentially due to uh, weather concerns. Uh, I'm not sure if you are aware or not about it, uh, but yes, sir. Um, I think closed off would be an aggressive term. Okay. Um, for, for obvious reasons with the amount of water flow, the kids at the middle school have been very attracted to the Red Bridge. Um, you know, like, hey, I got to go to the bathroom. And then all of a sudden they you know, hang a right and go to the Red Bridge. <laughs> okay. The PE staff, I think, just got kind of tired of the, like, having to run over there and get the kids back in line. So they took some caution tape and very loosely, it did not block anybody. My classroom looks directly out on that bridge. There's nobody crossing that bridge, you know, the regular dog walkers, you know, whatever. There's nobody who's actually heeding that. Um, I think the PE staff is just trying to say, hey, look, don't go past the yellow tape. We, we need to be able to keep eyes on you guys. Got it. I did get an email yesterday from a, a person who was concerned about some of the erosion around the footings of the bridge, particularly on the school side. So I didn't know if that actually got looked into or not. Um, and then just so I can put it out there, the property the bridge sits on actually on both sides and the bridge itself is actually the property of the school district, um, even though it does cross the creek, that part, which is why I think they put the bridge right there. But that particular part, um, all of that is within the school district property. So they technically own that bridge. But I was just more curious as to uh, if it had been closed off or not. Uh, I believe it's definitely not been closed off by any official means. Okay. Uh, but I couldn't comment on whether they've inspected the footings. It was the police stay in class and stuff looking at the river yep. inspection. I right, appreciate the update. Sorry, I had to bombard your report there, Luke. Oh, I, no, I don't. Uh, we, we've been out near that bridge because we're doing some some uh, logs and stuff. But I, I didn't officially inspect the, the red bridge, uh, but I have no knowledge of, of its structural integrity and so on. <laughs> okay. I had a question. And so when you're walking in the main part of the park and you're walking away from the play structure area, and that's where we've had some additional erosion this time on the right hand side with kind of where that sign is. The sidewalk is cracked. Was it cracked before? And I just didn't know. I'm just wondering. Like, are we? Yeah, it's uh, the sidewalk's been cracked there for for a long time. Okay. Um, you see, like the whole um, that that whole area there is yeah. um, is sloped a little bit. That's been for very very many many years uh, in the making, and so um, that's a natural part of of you know there has been erosion over the years as it yeah. cuts into the into the bank and, and you've seen a little bit of settling. Um, that's what the cracking is from. Okay. Uh, we're monitoring that area. Um, it, the sidewalk is safe. Uh, you know, there there will be potentially um, need to be some work done on the bank there. We, we did a lot of plantings this last year to try to short that bank. Um, this the storm. Was, Maybe washed uh, away all the plantings? It didn't. It didn't. Um, a lot of them held, but, but we did lose some, and, and um, okay. it, you know, it didn't hold as well as I was hoping. I think we got a lot more water. If we had a much more mild storm. It would have been a different story. But we, we, you know, we'll, we double our efforts. I'm in touch with uh, some erosion experts and creek restoration uh, engineers, and I've got um, some consultants that have been working with us in that area. So we'll, we'll continue to monitor it, monitor it, and, and have um, expert eyes on there to, to give us direction moving forward. So um, as of right now, um, things are, are okay, but we are, we are losing a little bit of land uh, at that end, and we'll be addressing that as soon as it's safe to get down there. Okay. Yeah. Definitely went safe. Okay. Anybody else, Chris? Um, I know I missed the last meeting, so I, I may be the guy that, that just missed something. But um, are we not that I'm expecting it to be reported out on now or next month? Because I know there's a lot going on. Do we still have that thread of are we researching potential restroom options? I know that I feel like the last time we talked about it, it was we were just push, pushing it out into the future because the maintenance facility was getting completed. Nice. Um, yeah, yeah, that's uh, definitely still still on our, on our radar. Okay, we're that's all. At, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. There has been movement there. Nothing fully to report on.
and have a forum for people to come talk to us. I'd be, I'd be willing to be part of something like that. I just don't know if maybe a wine drinking day is the best day. Um, you know, as, yeah. a, as opposed to maybe you're drinking. <laughs> um, well, it's just, another, it's, I think it's like, I would, yes, yeah. open, open to people coming to ask me questions or to organize something that's not a meeting, but something that's a little Yeah, bit... what we basically did was we just put a table, right? There's right. all the tables where you would go around for the wine. And I think we've done this for other events too. Um, and I'm just thinking that things are now opening up with um, COVID, that this might be something that we might want to do again. Eric, what's your view? Uh, I'm not opposed to any of it. I think we could easily take that offline. And if there's board members who are interested in doing that, come talk to uh, Luke uh, or myself and uh, we can kind of go from there and uh, okay. start to organize a little something like that. It would be a formal okay. meeting. And it, yeah, it wouldn't need to just be the raise the glass. You could do also the next event that's coming up too, so that we can hit up different uh, groups of people. But it just it cued me. I remember sitting there with Isabel and only getting questions about the winery but, and asking if we had a winery. And I was like, nope. I'm game, but it depends on time. Yeah. Okay. March 4th, I work. Yeah, it's closest to taxes. Mm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Should we open up to the public? Is there anybody on the board? Yeah, one second. Please. Okay. Yeah. All right, so there's actually a lot of stuff to, to cover here. Uh, first, uh, with the uh, recreation. Um, you know, every weekend uh, where there's not some community activity um, uh, going on in the community center, I, I think it's a bit of a failure on, on the part of the community and part of the CSD to open up the facility uh, for community events. Um, that facility, it was built for community events. It was not built for um, adult education courses or um, uh, classrooms for a preschool. And it seems like we've gotten away from that. Um, I've heard some reports that it's in disrepair. I, I don't know what that's all about, but um, I do know in, in my case, uh, you know, I have a good guitar group going. Uh, we had to go to a church, which is actually working out just fine, but uh, it's a shame that we can't do it right in our community because that's where it started. Um, with regards to the park maintenance facility, um, I am really concerned about that fence. Um, I was, as you know, about six months ago or eight months ago, I, I reported to the board. I was walking by there during a gust of wind and the, the, the fence came down, but it didn't come down all the way because it was all intact. It was joined. So if Luke, if you take out sections of that fence, there's going to be nothing stopping that fence from uh, tipping over and possibly hurting someone. So I would recommend that uh, that you do not disassemble uh, the fence. Just prop it up if you, if you don't want to deal with, with messing with the fence. But um, uh, you, you don't want to make a, a bad situation worse. Um, uh, actually, I guess that's that's pretty much it. I, I do think that uh, I love the idea that uh, Savan uh, brings forward uh, uh, the community outreach. I actually think the best way to do that would be in the form of a uh, annual meeting, you know, state of the CSD and somewhat formal where you would talk about um, what you have planned for the CSD, do a bit of a question and answer. And then uh, maybe have some event, uh, casual event afterwards where people could question you on on, uh, you know, factors around uh, uh, the CSD. You have a great impact on the future of this community, and I, I, it's unfortunate, I think, that we end up um, just covering what the staff uh, reports, which, uh, uh, you know, saying, hey, you did a good job, but we're not really talking to the community, we're not really presenting ideas and a vision for growth, All and right. you guys have good ideas, and uh, you really need... Thank you, Stephen. Um, sorry, you were over three minutes, and it's nine o'clock, and I just want to make sure that we're thinking about everybody's time, and some people have to get up really early for their day jobs. Okay, um, are there any board members of interest for future agenda items? I guess just an update on... Uh, maybe the playground. Chris, I think you were thinking an update on possible restrooms. Um, well, only if there's time. I, I feel like the next month is going to be full of a lot of stuff already. So yeah. just I, I felt more out of the loop just because I missed in December. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I guess I just want to know like what's our next point um, with the playgrounds. I know that we were starting to do stuff and I just was wondering what the update on that was. Um, and I guess just letting us know maybe next month, Eric, about if we're going to be able to get a report in March or if it's going to be later. Um, if you guys are kind of seeing with in terms of our um, audit. Thank you for the word. No worries. I'm fading fast. I have jet lag still. So um, does anybody else? So I apologize for the multiple yawns. I've been passed out in bed by seven o'clock this whole week. So anybody else have any other questions for <laughs> um, for the next month? No? Okay. Um, I guess this is a public comment. One second. Leave it. Uh, Savan, you can go to bed shortly. Um, I do think we need to have a honest discussion about civility. And um, I, I got to tell you, just cutting me off mid-sentence because you're tired and I, I passed the three-minute mark. Stephen, I do not. I, I don't I'm have speaking, the ability to I'm cut speaking, you speaking, off. I'm speaking and I don't want to wish to be interrupted. I want to have civil conversations. And it really does impact uh, the civility uh, bad when uh, there's not a mutual respect. And um, tonight has gone pretty well. And uh, with with regards to the, the last incident, that was that was just the last incident. I But, but really... Um, Let's try this year to uh, improve relations and see what we can do together cooperatively as a community. And uh, I look forward to supporting you all uh, in 2023. Thank you. Um, Eric, before we let Ryan go ahead and speak, I would just like to remind all members that speakers may address comments to the board and limit their comments to three minutes. After three minutes, we have the ability to stop the comments. Stephen, we let you continue on for an additional 45 seconds. And I actually do not have any power to turn your mic on or off. So yelling at me that I cut you off, I understand it's frustrating, but we are giving you the three minutes that you're allowed to, per, per time that you're allowed to make a comment. Go ahead, Ryan. I'd love to hear what you have to say. One second. Ryan. Okay. Can you guys hear me all right? Yes, we sir. can hear you. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, my son was friends with a child that, that uh, passed away, one of the children that passed away in that crash. And um, the community has been amazing for the family and, and the families of, of all the people involved. Um, you know, to ask what the deal was or how it happened, the reason is it's just ridiculous. And it's not even, it's not pertinent because you have families that lost children. Um, but what Chief White said, Chief White said about the first responders that showed up there, I think it's a good reminder for all of us. Because um, to be quite honest, I didn't even think about it, about how their well-being is. And I'm not sure, I mean, I, how we could do this, but I know this, this is a community and someone that, a community that looks out for each other, most of us. And 
I would love to get on some sort of list, as would my wife, as would probably others in the community, where you can just kind of give us a heads up and we can do like a check-in. Um, maybe buy the guys some pizza or something like that. It's just a thought, but there's a, thankfully, there aren't a lot of tragedies, but there's, there's something that we, we can all can do just to support one another. That was it. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. And our hearts go out to you guys um, and your son for having to deal with this. Um, I think that probably reaching out to Chief White, but also just going and knocking on the firehouse door um, and, right? Or is it still no, close? I do want to uh, get in touch with me. I'm happy to you know, get a brain storm on some of this stuff with you too. Uh, you know how to track me down, so it's not a problem whatsoever. Uh, uh, and again, you know, as Chief White said, you know, there certainly is, you know, not only counseling, but you know, uh, firefighters and IFF have a large peer support network um, and everything else too. That said, I am uh, sure they always uh, appreciate um, uh, gestures of appreciation from the community as well. So, uh, uh, Ryan, please feel free to just give me a call or uh, shoot me an email or stop by uh, here. We can kind of take it from there. And anybody really. Chris, do you have something? I was just going to say, um, Ryan, you bring up a really great point about just appreciating the people who are leading us, whether they be the first responders, the people who are looking after our kids, the summer camp, overseeing the pool, everything like that. Um, if we go back to maybe board member items of interest, I'd love to um, see how we could, with our two commissions, maybe put it on their agenda to see how we could, uh, you know, formally potentially appreciate those people who are really working to make our community great. I realize they get paid, but being a public servant myself, um, just getting paid doesn't always, you know, it, it oftentimes feels really nice to get something from the community that isn't in the form of, you know, dollars and cents. We'll drop an apple on your desk. With a bite taken out of it? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so apple core. <laughs> If there's nothing else, and I'd just love to follow uh, Ryan Madden's lead and suggest that uh, we adjourn tonight's meeting in honor yes. and memory of those uh, those five young people and their families and friends who are just heavily impacted by this. Uh, as Luke mentioned, and as Chief White mentioned, uh, you know, two of them were our staff here, and uh, we're very close with our staff and, and have a lot of profound respect for them uh, and all that they bring. So with that, I would appreciate if we could adjourn tonight's meeting in their honor and in the memory of the, of the two that lost their life in that accident. I agree. So I guess we are adjourned. So we are adjourned. Good night. Good night. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.